What up, everybody? We're back. And we are ready to talk about pound for pound. Number one, who is the pound for pound king? Who is the pound for pound number one? I'm going to do a total of four. I was going to do five, but number five, I, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to to let me know who you guys think is number five. Um, I mean, I personally think maybe Nakatani, you know, maybe... Um, uh, maybe, uh, who else, who else? I don't know. I'm thinking Nakatani could be number five. But you guys let me know. I mean, there's always Shakur. All right. But some people got him at number one. Um, even though I, I don't know what he's done. <laughs> but it, listen, the thing about Pound for Pound is, like, the original was Sugar Ray Robinson. And really, it was something someone said. You know, someone just said that. You know, like, yeah, pound for pound. And then everybody took it from there and be like, okay, now we got to look for another pound for pound. And really, that goes to show how good Sugar Ray was, or at least how the hardcores, because he's he was a hardcore. Um, so so basically, there's there's different types of, of fighters, right? There's the there's the fighters that attract the masses, like Ali. You know, like um, um, Mayweather, like you could even say Tank Davis, maybe for some for some people. Um, but then there's the fighters that attract the hardcore boxing fan, right? There's the the fighters that attract the um, the connoisseurs of the sport, rather than both the connoisseurs and the masses. Like for example, Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia is, like I said, he's the guy that attracts the masses. But the hardcores don't really like him that much. Uh, they think he's, he's a cancer to the boxing and he should die, <laughs> right? I mean, let's be honest, that, that is the truth. And other fighters, they're protected by the hardcore boxing fans. And nobody really knows who they are, you know, in, 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 in the bigger stage. Now, the thing is, here in the U.S., um, the casuals really control the market of boxing, okay, and right now with Turkey Alex Sheik, it's a little bit of, of the opposite is happening because, um, because Turkey Alex Sheik is a hardcore boxing fan, you know, and he has money and he's not afraid to use it, <laughs> unlike Americans who have the money, but they're very afraid to use it. You know, that's the one thing about American capitalism that I've noticed is that the richer you get, the more successful your company becomes, the more of a piece of shit you become. <laughs> and, and you start to hog the money. I got to keep more money. What can I do to make more money but do less work? Oh, we'll make up, we'll make up self-checkout. Um, you know, the, the, when you go to the store, you go to Walmart, you, you check yourself out. You know what I mean? So they're doing the job and, and we're we're getting the money. So it's, it's little stuff like that, that that you could see in the American market that, that shows you what American capitalism is all about. It's about doing less for more. And that's why you have the boxers that we have today where they want to fight once a year, run around the ring for 12 rounds. And then get mad because we don't want to see that shit. And say, oh no, you just don't know what boxing is. Oh no, I know what boxing is. And it ain't what the fuck you do. I know that for a fact. Um, but. But anyways, guys. Back to pound for pound. Um, and yeah, the, the first guy was Sugar Ray Robinson. But really, Sugar Ray Robinson. The reason they said that is because a lot of people weren't really paying attention to the smaller weight classes. Um, except for the hardcores. The hardcores love the smaller weight classes because the smaller weight classes have always shown more skill. All throughout the history of boxing and throughout the history of, of fighting in general, you know, smaller is better. Why? Because smaller people or not not that small. Like let's say uh, five, nine, you know, and up. 
well, not, not enough, but once you get to a certain height, I think your abilities diminish. Why? Because you lose less abilities, and because you, you, you lose less abilities, uh, you lose less abil- more abilities. So, like, for example, a smaller guy, he's going to have to learn how to move his head. He's going to have to learn how to block, but he can't block too much because he's too small, so he's going to have to parry. He's going to have to learn how to move his head, like I said. You know, he's going to have to use his feet as defense sometimes. Why? Because you can't stand in front of a big guy for too long. Because if he hits you with something heavy, he could go through, break through the guard. Um, you know, things like this. It, 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 all of those things have to be learned by a smaller or medium-sized fighter. Now, for a taller fighter, really all he really needs is a good jab and good footwork and very good condition. Okay, why? Because really he's going to be staying on the outside. So he's going to be using his fundamentals of footwork. And he's going to be sticking the jab out and doing one twos. Head movement is going to go out the window for, for a taller guy. Why? Because he's not really going to have to worry about you, your little ass hitting him up there. You know, he's, he's just going to be using his footwork. Oh, I see him coming in. Step back, jab, one, two. Jab, jab, one, uh, two, three. You know, and, and stay on the outside. All right, now... Uh, mistakenly, through the years, we've been thinking that bigger is better, and that's why here in the U.S. we love, and it really in the world, we love the bigger fighters. We love the, the heavyweights. So anytime a heavyweight does something, the whole world looks at them, especially if it's American heavyweights, in the past at least. Um, and, and it was the fact that we just knew how to promote them. Like, we knew how to, how to make the world look at us. Um with these heavyweights. Um, but in my opinion, I felt I feel like when it came to Sugar Ray Robinson, that's what they were doing. They were promoting, hey guys, come look at this this guy. He's he's small, but pound for pound, if he could, he would. You know, if he could go up to to two hundred plus pounds, he would. And he would be the best. Right. And and I and I feel like in my opinion, they were building it up to try and do that, but he just couldn't for various reasons. I think he had drinking problems. I think he um, he pushed himself to to the limit. And towards the end of his career, it was just him just making fights for, just to make them, you know. Um, but um, but that that's like I said. In, in, from its inception of the pound for pound keen, it was never really uh, meant to as like a ranking system as it is now or as a validation that you're any good. It's really, really, really for the hardcores. It's really for those people that that want to feel like, oh, my guy is the best. And that's really what it was in the beginning too. Um, but with the exception that now people want other people to believe what they believe, and if they don't believe what they believe, they think that you're a bum, they think that you don't know anything about boxing, and so on and so forth. And really, it's people, pound for pound is really one of the dumbest things ever. And the reason I'm talking about it is because, like I said, a lot of people uh, believe it's a conversation that's important. In my personal opinion, it, it really isn't. It's just opinions. Now, the problem is with opinions is that sometimes opinions are based on race. Opinions are based on classism. Like I said, racism, classism, or based on, you know, quote, unquote, the eye test, which it's <laughs> it's your eyes, bro. You know what I mean? It's, it's your eyes versus my eyes. Of course, the eye test, in my opinion, is one of the stupidest things ever invented when people say that. Um, why? Because your eyes can deceive you, especially if you're racist, <laughs> okay? I mean, let's be honest. If you're seeing things through, through racist eyes, your eyes can deceive you. So what, so what can't deceive you? In my opinion, we should go nowadays, since we're, we're making it a thing, which it really was just opinions, but if... If we're going to try to make our opinions educated and not based on, quote-unquote, the eye test, quote-unquote, classism, racism, or uh, political leanings, meaning, oh, I only want Americans in my list, 
no Asians, right? No, no Japanese. Um, so in order for us not to get tribal about these sort of things, we have to go by uh, the things they have accomplished. And how do we do that? With belts, looking at the belts that they have, how many weight divisions have to become disputed, or how many weight divisions have to become dominant. Um, you know, those are the things that we that we can that we can look at to quantify and say who is pound for pound, and not be victim to our own biases, our own. Um, uh, prejudice because we're all you know we all have our own biases that we like and it doesn't have to even have to be prejudiced or or, or or racist or anything like that for example it may be just the fact that you like certain styles and you hate other styles maybe you don't like a, a guy who closes the distance too much maybe you don't like a a guy who who stays on the outside too much that could be another thing that, but it's still like I said, it's your opinion and it's based on things that you like or dislike. But if we go by the numbers and if we go by the things that we can grasp, like I said, like I said, like how I said, you know, how many belts do they have? Uh, how many weight divisions? Uh, are they undisputed on any of those weight divisions? Uh, how many weight classes have they moved up since the, the time that they um, started boxing? Um, all of these things in my opinion, should be quantified into to seeing who is pound for pound, number one. And um, on the, at number four, I'm going to go with Terrence Crawford. Now, as I move up in weight, I'm going to have I'm going to have less problems with the fighter that I choose. Okay, and I'm going I'm going to put less asterisks. In the fighters. Okay. So. Obviously since Terrence is number four. I'm going to. Tell you guys. Why he's not number one. Number two. Or number three. Um, he is. In my opinion. The Sugar Ray Robinson. Of this generation. And, and I'm not saying that. Necessarily in that much of a good way. Um, I'm saying it because he is the hardcore boxing fans champion. And he is the one that they keep pushing on everybody and saying that he's the best and he's a switch hitter like Hagler or, or he's, you know, untouchable. Nobody ever touches his face. Uh, you know, stuff like this, like almost comparing him to like Mayweather and to Hagler and to all of these great... The, the hardcore boxing fan of today love Terrence Crawford. Okay, and to, to, to an extent to where if you say anything about him or anything... Like, for example, one time one of his gloves exploded mysteriously, which I always thought was crazy, dude. Like, it's so rare for that to happen to regular people that don't even box every day. But for it to happen... To Terrence Crawford at an elite level. Dude, I mean, I had to say something about it. I was like, dude, there's something wrong with this. Like, people need to check this out. I'm I'm not saying I'm just saying just look at it. Because it's kind of suspicious. That's all I'm saying. And people are just me just saying that, you know, got the hardcores mad and they started to go at me like I was a blasphemer or a heretic, an infidel, um, or, or, or a casual, as they say, you're, you're a casual, you know, that's, that's, that's the famous words of people on the boxing community, you're just a casual, right, and that's supposed to be like insulted to me, okay, whatever, dude, casuals are the ones that pay, you know, casuals aren't cheap bastards, um, <laughs> you know, so maybe I am a casual, but um, um, uh, I don't know. But the thing about Terrence Crawford is like, what are his biggest wins? I'm not gonna remember all of them because, like I said, Terrence Crawford is one of these guys who is the hardcore boxing fans champion. 
And so a lot of them are going to, to tell you that he's become undisputed in several weight classes, the most weight classes of everybody else, um, which I think if you say, if you bring up a new way, then they're like, oh, but nobody knows those guys. You got to understand, nobody knows those guys here where you're from. But I bet you nobody could mention a lot of the guys Terrence Crawford beat to become undisputed in those weight classes. Um, except for Mary, maybe, um, Spence, right? But I mean, think about it. That's his biggest fight, Spence. Now let's look at Spence. First of all, Spence, he was good. Okay, he, he was good. But I personally thought that the, the fight happened five years too late, personally. Um, I had made a prediction when the fight was going to happen before. Spence went through. After that. Spence went through. A bunch of shit. It was all his fault by the way. I'm not making any excuses for Spence. But I'm also just saying. It took Terrence Crawford a long time. To fight Spence. Um, fighting about who's A side. Who's B side. Fighting about. all Like that's diva shit. Now, a lot of people are going to say, here, he say, she said, they're going to be like, oh, it was Spence who was being a dealer. Oh, it was, listen, if you wanted the fight to happen, it could have happened a long time ago. Terrence Crawford had the, the, the backing of the hardcore, hardcore boxing fan, and Spence had a little bit of both. Okay, so um, that's enough to make a fight happen. You know, that's enough to... Now, people are going to say, oh, it was Spence, like I said. Or, or the other, if you like the other one, you're going to say it was, it was Crawford. Point is that it didn't happen when there was other fighters that were making shit happen in other weight divisions. You know, um... So, that Spence, like I said, Spence was damaged goods already. Okay, I still, I still thought that he might have still have a chance, but when he went in there... With Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford demolished him, and that was really the only the only fight, in my opinion, personally, because I had seen him fight before. But against Spence, he looked phenomenal. He looked like he could be the greatest, you know, that I personally ever seen. In that fight, okay, he looked masterful. But my my thing is, why hadn't I seen that before? And the only answer could be that that maybe he just hasn't been tested. Or maybe he just hasn't been pushed to that edge to where he's like, I have to be the best ever. And again, Spence was the only time where I saw him, I saw him catching jabs and throwing at the same time. Um, I saw them countering before and after uh, shots. Which is, I mean, the level of speed you have to do to do that to begin with is crazy. Um, but the other fights, like for example, Kell Brooks. That's another guy who who was damaged goods. Uh, now, I'm just I'm just being honest with you guys. I know a lot of you guys are gonna are gonna hate me for this, but I'm just telling you the truth. He was damaged goods. Nobody in there nobody thought that Kell Brooks was gonna win. Nobody was like, oh my god, Terrence Crawford, he might lose this one. Nobody did. Nobody did. Gamboa is another one of his biggest wins. <laughs> uh, and come on, Gamboa is a midget, bro. He's a midget, and just think about just think about this. One of the, Terrence Crawford's biggest names is Gamboa, and now Terrence Crawford is being mentioned to fight Canelo Alvarez. Think about how much of a midget this guy got credit for fighting with Gamboa. Think about that, bro. Like he, and listen, Terrence Crawford, in my opinion, he's one of these boxers that falls into the category. And I, I'm not, I'm not. Just, just bear with me. But I said before, ninety five percent of boxers today punch down, and I meant it. And I think Terrence Crawford is one of those guys. <laughs> I think he is, bro. Like I'm telling you, only now he's come. He's starting to come up to the weight classes. To where I believe he should be at. Only now. 95% of boxers today. This is what they do. 
they drain themselves as much as they can so that they could fight fighters that are smaller than them. Okay, that's what they that's what they all do. It's very rare that a fighter does the opposite and moves up in weight consecutively. It's very rare. And that's why, in my opinion, Terrence Crawford is four in my list. There's a bunch of more other things that I could talk about that are asterisks, in my opinion. But I'm pretty sure half of you are probably cussing me out in the comments. So let's move on <laughs> to number three. Now, number three is, in my opinion, Canelo Alvarez. Um, why? Because, I mean, he's literally like what you want a pound for pound to do or what what you would dream a pound for pound to do, which is move up in several weight classes. Um, he's not fighting his a lot of his mandatories, and people hate him for that. Um, but if he fought his mandatories, people also hate him for that too because they say, oh, he could have fought this guy instead if Terrence he fought this mandatory. Which, if we talk about Terrence, a lot of times we wanted him to fight certain fighters and he decided to fight his mandatory. But he was praised for that. That that should tell you the level of bias in people. So, Like, for example, right now, Canelo Alvarez has several mandatories. And those mandatories, let's be honest, they suck. Okay, nobody wants to see those fights. I don't even know their names, bro. I know their faces. If I look at them, maybe. But I don't know who they are. That's what Terrence Crawford was doing. He was fighting those guys. In the, the, the... I'm telling you, bro. Like this is this is like I said, it's I test. But now, now we're talking about how many weights has he moved up. Canelo has moved up a bunch of weight classes from where he started. Okay, now you can go look it up. I could tell you, but you can go look it up. I'm not your bookie. All right. So people people are always like, receipts, receipts. Bro, what am I doing? Your taxes? Or what, what are you Canelo has moved up the most weight classes. And he's punching way above his weight class. Now, I know people are going to say um, he's he's big. But he, in my opinion, from, from the list that I'm talking about, he's probably the one or two. No, he's he's these these next three guys are going to be the ones that fight in their walk-around weight. They fight around their walk-around weight. And that's really, in my opinion, what a pound-for-pound, pound, what I look at when it comes to pound-for-pound. Pound. Is if a guy is fighting around their walk around weight, that means they're not doing any shenanigans to try and beat up midgets like Gamboa. Okay, they're not they're not doing that cloak and dagger type shit. They're actually like if you were actually go up to Canelo and try to box him, he'd probably beat your ass for sure. Um, and some of these other boxers, I don't I'm not sure. I can't say that. Because they're doing all that other crazy stuff. Um, now, well, he's my, he's my, he's my number, my number three. Of course, he has losses in his belts. Of course, he got beat up by another pound for pound king. Um, and actually beat up is, is kind of harsh, really. He got out boxed. He got out boxed by Floyd Mayweather, uh, who was another pound for pound king, uh, of the past. And, um... But that that's the level of competition that he like. Look at, I don't know if you guys remember it, with him fighting against Munguia. And in that fight, you could tell the weight difference. Uh, who was a natural, you know. Who was a natural? What was it? What one six one sixty or one? I forgot. I forgot the weight range. But who was the who was the natural middleweight? Right, and who wasn't supposed to be there? Um. By the way, the gloves reacted when 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 Munguia landed on on Canelo's gloves. You know, you could just see like yeah, yeah, Canelo is not supposed to be here. You know, and that's why when people talk about Terence Crawford versus Canelo, 
Um, it's like that's that's really when I started to realize how Canelo is is moving up so far in weight. And when you see them, like seriously, when you see them next to each other, if the fight does happen, you're gonna realize how great Canelo is. Because you're gonna realize how small he really is, and how Terence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez are pretty much the same size. And you're gonna realize the difference in their careers, where Canelo Alvarez is moving up and fighting these guys that are naturally bigger than him, and Terence Crawford has been holding that weight for longer to try and fight all of these guys that he's really not supposed to be there with. Now, strategically, strategically, Terrence Crawford is going to come into the fight against Canelo Alvarez with an advantage of peak weight. Okay, what I mean by that? That means he's moving up to where his body can't really take it no more, so he's going to move up and weight at the right point. Okay, now we got to see. Is Canelo one of these guys who's better against? Because there is there is such thing as a guy who's better against bigger fighters. And they kind of suck against people that are their own size or smaller. So we just got to see if the fight happens. But my thing is, you're going to realize the difference between a fighter that moves up in weight and fights around its own weight, uh, his own walk around weight, and a fighter who's been holding back. When you see them together, you're going to see that. Like, people always talk about Charlo, right? But Charlo, for a long time, was doing the same shit. Trying to drain himself to fight these these smaller fighters. But when you saw him in there with Canelo, it was like, Charlo was bigger than Canelo. He's bigger than Canelo. He's the freaking giant, bro, compared to Canelo. And then you start connecting the dots, you're like, not only is he bigger than Canelo, he's about the same size as some of these uh, Russians Canelo's been been fighting, like Bebo and, and and now you're like, now you see the illusion now you start realizing, a lot of these guys most of these guys are punching down and there's only a few that I'm about to pen- mention that are punching up or around their own size, and speaking of, of, of that guy um Inoue, you know, Inoue has to be mentioned as pound for pound number two, in my opinion, which for a while he was number one. But after I mention number number one, you're going to realize why. Um, divisions under his belt, and he's undisputed as well, I think. So I think that's um, three or four weight divisions that he's moved up. Right, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's three or four. Um, definitely, I think one more than Terrence. And the reason I know that is because people were making a big fuzz about it. Um, immediately, Inua was attacked for that, for <laughs> for uh, having one more weight class than Terrence Crawford. That's how I know about that. Um, and. And was it racial? I mean, that's up to you. I, I know it was, but I don't want to just come out and say it. But it, it's it's just, you know, racial politics, uh, even national nationalist politics. The fact that he's Japanese. Um, I heard I heard a professional professional um, ex boxer, and I'm just gonna say it, it's uh, um, what's his name? I have to forget his name. Um, Sean Porter. Say, oh, he needs to he needs to come and fight in America if he wants to be big. When he has already, I think twice, he has already fought here in the U.S. He's actually fought all around the world. This guy, and he's a, he's a go getter. He's not afraid like American fighters are. Like they don't want to they don't want to fight outside their own country. They're scared that they might get cheated on or whatever. That's, the thing is, bro, the American style boxing was made to get the win. I'm just going to be honest. The American style of boxing was made to get the win in the U.S. Just think about it. If I dance around the ring for a couple of rounds and jab, ta, 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 jab around, as long as I stay safe on the outside, I'm going to get the win. I'm going to get the knock. But that, that shit doesn't work outside of the U.S. When you go outside, guess what you got to do? 
You got to go get it. I will not leave you alone. That type of shit. Tyson Fury, do not worry. I will not leave you alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That type, that's what you got to do. But the thing is, if you've been training like an American fighter, like an Olympic-style fighter, guess what? You're not going to make it unless you stay in Las Vegas like Floyd Mayweather did. If you stay there and you buy um, everything you need to buy, if you have your own referee, and if you uh, um, have at least one of the judges on your side, then maybe that style will work. But if you go outside, if you go abroad, guess what? They're going to do the same shit. They're going to be trying to do the same shit to you. So what do you got to do? You got to go to the body in the first couple of rounds. And hope to God that that haymaker at the end, boom, kills him. Um, And guess what he has been doing? Exactly that. All over the world, no matter where he goes, he knows what he has to do to get the win. And he does it. Um, which is a lot more than a lot of our fighters has been doing, unfortunately. Um, and, and so, yeah, he's my, he's my number two. Um, if you see him, the, his last fight I saw against Needy, Needy, yeah, Luis Needy, uh, from Mexico. And I think he was banned from Japan for, uh, using PEDs. And, um. And they finally let him back in to Japan to fight against um, Inui. And Inui, you know, he wasn't doing too well in the beginning. And then he caught him with a with a, with a shot on the inside. They were trying to exchange, which is something you don't do against a guy like Nidhi. Um, and then he went back to boxing. And when he went back to boxing and wore him out a little bit, then he went back to banging again. Pulsation without representation. But, you know, he went back to boxing and he got the win. So, and I think he knew it just thought, oh, he, he's not he's not on PEDs no more, so that means I can beat him. That's not how it works, actually. Uh, first of all, you could be on PEDs and still lose because it's not about how strong you are, how fast you are in boxing. And in any, any kind of fight, it's not about that. It's about, you know, do you know how to use what you got? Um your advantage and can you get the other person into your game plan instead of their game plan um and, and it, it it takes more than just strength and speed to do that you know um and that's why I, like, a lot of times you see like people in, in pds not get the win uh but yeah i think he mistakenly you knew it in the first round mistakenly thought that that was the case he was like oh i'm just gonna bum rush this guy he got caught on the inside um and he got up and immediately started boxing. He got the win. So that's the the other thing I like about him is that the quote unquote eye test he also passes as well because he can box and he can brawl, and um, and he has a good chin. So so definitely you know he knew he is my number two. And moving on to my number one, pound for pound, he. Who is definitely going to be Oleksandr Usaik. Now, why is it Oleksandr Usaik? It's obvious, of course, he, you know, has done what we all want a pound for pound to do, which is move up, right? Now, before this, people wanted, a long time ago, people wanted Tyson Fury to be pound for pound number one. And my, my take on that was like, He's a heavyweight, and heavyweights can't be pound for pound. Why? Because the whole point of pound for pound is to give attention to the smaller fighters or fighters that move, that can possibly move up in weight. Right? And it's actually something made to counter or to promote um, smaller fighters over heavyweights. Right? So pound for pound negates... Um, it just, being a heavyweight, it just negates the whole pound for pound narrative. Why? Because you're, you're already the biggest. But like I said, pound for pound is for smaller fighters. That's why the category was made 
So it, it, it just it just impossible in my opinion to see a heavyweight as pound for pound. It just doesn't happen that way. Um so so yeah, that's why I, I didn't I didn't I never thought Tyson Fury was pound for pound. I think it was I thought it was stupid to mention him as, as pound for pound or any heavyweight for that matter. Um But Usyk is also a heavyweight, but the problem with the thing about Usyk or the exception with Usyk is that he moved up in weight, and you could see it in this fight. You could see the weight difference. You could see the height difference. Uh, was definitely, you know, there. It's definitely present in the fight, and you could tell that Tyson Fury was a natural heavyweight, and that Alexander Usyk was definitely the smaller, the smaller guy in there. Um, and that's part of the reason that. You know, he gets hurt to the body a lot because that's one of the things that stays weak when you move up or down in weight is that body, you know, um, especially if you blow up in weight, which I don't think is, is the case with uh, with Usyk. But, you know, I mean, Usyk is one of these guys that even the eye test, I mean, if you don't like how this guy fights, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, the guy is spectacular in the ring. Uh, he's a south southpaw, but he's a very educated southpaw. He's a very tricky southpaw. Um, he has the same style as Alexander Usyk, which is I like to describe it as a mixture of of Tyson and Manny Pacquiao, right? Or yeah, like a almost like a almost like a Mexican, but with way better footwork, right? Because notoriously Mexican style doesn't really have very good footwork, but these guys, you know, both, and that's what I call the U- Ukrainian style, why, because both him and, and the Lomachenko have the, the, a similar style, as both southpaws and they both um, use, you know, similar elements, um, one of the, my favorite things about Usyk is that he has that vertical, that vertical, um, punch that he he slips through the middle of his opponent's um jab and his uh backhand um so for those of you that don't know verticals you know are frowned upon in some uh quote-unquote expert community of boxing because they say the corks true you gotta throw corks true but you know here we have a guy that slaps with his punches and a guy who throws verticals with his punches so Basically, what I'm trying to say is your coach sucks. Your coach doesn't know what he's talking about, basically. <laughs> it's what I'm saying because these guys here have made a living, you know, doing exactly what your coach tells you not to do. One of them smacks, backhands you with his glove, which is Tyson Fury. Another one uses vertical punches to slip through the cracks, pulsation. Um, but, yeah, this is my number one. I mean, just the eye test, of course, he passes. Uh, the fact that he moved up in weight and is beating up a bunch of taller, bigger fighters is definitely candidate, in my opinion, for pound for pound number one. Of course, it's only two weight classes, right? It's only two weight classes. But the feat that he's done, in my opinion, becoming undisputed in two different weight classes, the top uh, weight classes is still, in my opinion, uh, you know, definitely... Candidate for Pound for Pound King, in my opinion. But anyways, guys, that is going to be it for today. Hope you like this video. Um, if you disagree, let me know. You know, um, yeah, just, just comment. Just tell me who you think should be number one. Um, maybe you guys think, oh, Mayweather should always be number one, no matter what. Even if he's not active anymore, he should still be number one Pound for Pound King, no matter what. Um... And then go go ahead and go ahead and state your comment, and I will read your comment and and maybe reply, maybe not reply. I, I think I reply to everybody because I don't have that many people that listen to this shit anyway. So, um, but yeah, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys later.